Let's have a look at how we can work with files using make.com. Now, Google Drive is one of the most common ways to store and access files. So that's what we'll be using here in this tutorial. But you can apply this logic to any other file storage service as long as it is cloud-based. You can't do this logic if your files are physically on your computer hard drive and you're only accessing them through your computer folders. You can still access those files in the cloud if you connect them with something like the Google Drive desktop application, which syncs your files to your local drive as well as in the cloud. First up, we need to know how to get the file ID. If you've got the link, that there is your file ID. That will be what you use to call the file when you want to access it from Google. Now you can get it from the URL if you've got the link to the file, or if you do a search of files, you'll also be able to return the file ID. You can see here that it does return all the information, including the file ID, and that is the same ID of the file that is used on the URL. Now, when we access the file via the Google search, we get several other links, including a thumbnail, an icon, and a web view link. Now to access a file on Google Drive, we have a download a file module. Here, we just need to pass in the file ID. We can map that from another previous module, or we can put it in there manually. And then when we run this module, the file will be downloaded onto the make.com server computer. So the file doesn't get downloaded to our physical drive. It's very different to when we download a file in our browser, it downloads physically to our own computer. Here it is downloading temporarily to the make server, and then we can interact with that file as if it was on our computer. Now, if we look at the properties of that downloaded file, we get a specific field here called data. And inside the data field, we have binary data. And binary data is essentially non-readable data. And it's intended for a computer to then read and interpret to then access the properties of that file. But we can't actually physically interact with it. We can't open it and see it and edit it. It's just a file that exists on the make server. However, we can, once we've got file data, we can upload that data into other places. So if we wanted to move our file from Google Drive to Airtable or Pipedrive, we can do that after we've downloaded the data of the file. That's really important. Some systems will want you to give them the URL link so that the system can then download its own binary data for that file. However, most systems will actually want the binary data of that file and for you to then upload that into their platform. So here we've got the upload module for Google Drive. Now Google Drive wants binary data. Here it's automatically mapping from the previous module because it, it recognizes that there's binary data in that module. And here we can set it to custom map if we want to change the file name, for instance, or manually map the data we can. Once that's mapped in, we will then be able to upload that thing into the new place on either Google Drive or something else. So now let's have a look at when something wants to receive a URL of the file. Well, you may think that you can just map in the URL of the web view link. And that's partially correct because as long as the platform that you're sending this file to can access that link, it can then download the file at that link's address. The problem is that all of these cloud platforms have permissions associated to the files and folders that you store things in. And so we can't just put the link in here and have the system download the data. You can see here, the first time I sent that record across to Airtable, it didn't find an error in the data, but it wasn't able to download that file and store it in the database. And that's because the permissions on the file were restricted to only logged in users under my Google Drive account. So what I need to do is change the file share properties. Now we can do that with a module and that module is get a share link. And again, we just map in the file ID. We set the role to reader and then we set the type to anyone. Now it has to be anyone because it's going to be a cloud-based app 
accessing this file when it is trying to download it. So here we could set the share to anyone, and then maybe we want to wait one minute, two minutes, and then we could set the share back to private. That's a nice little workaround to make sure that we can download and access the file, but also restrict the privacy back to something that makes sense for the file in the future. You could also go to the file or folder on Google Drive, right click on the file, and then share the file and just change that to anyone with this link can then view the file, which allows them to also download that file as well. So now let's look at another way to access files. Here we've got Airtable and Airtable doesn't return binary data. Instead, it returns a URL to the file. So if we copy the URL, we can put it in our browser and then we will get the file. Now that means that we can then download that file using make.com. If you try to put the URL in the browser and you get an error, or it takes you to a web page where it's got lots of things for you to click on, then you're not going to be able to download the file. You have to have the direct link to the file to be able to download it. So now that we've got the file, we can map the media field and I'll just use the large file URL here. And we can map that into the HTTP module for get a file. And if we look at the outputs here, we can ignore the ones with the errors because they're just simply missing the file. There's no URL for accessing the file, therefore it errors. But the ones that do have a URL, we're able to access the file and then download the binary data. 